your instructor will email or post a student sign-up link and a PIN code for each of the remote lab activities that you'll do this semester. You'll want to copy that PIN code because you'll need it when you sign up for the session. Clicking on the sign-up link will take you to the scheduler. If you already have used the scheduler at any time in the past, you can enter your username here, or if you forgot it, you can click on this link. If you're creating a new account, which means you've never used the system before, then you'll want to enter a good email address and perhaps an alternate address as well, along with other pertinent information such as your first name and last name. And you'll need to make up a password, and that password needs to conform to the rules here on the screen. Then select whatever school you're uh, registered at and select the date that you want to do the lab activity that you're signing up for on. There may be several dates to choose from. And here's where you enter that PIN code. Clicking Next will allow you to select a time for this particular lab. Notice that in this case, one person has registered for 5 to 6 p.m. on this date. And if that time works for you, then sign up with other students so that you have lab partners. The activity registration page confirms that you're scheduled on the date and time that you selected, and that time will be shown in the time zone that your computer is in. It will also show you your username and password and other important information. Very important is the confirmation email that you will receive. This completes the registration process and you must do this in order to complete the registration. Sometimes this email appears in the spam folder, so if you don't see it, check there. I'll make this non-spam and put it in my inbox and that will allow me to click on the link that's in the email. So this confirmation email has a link in it that you have to click on and that will complete your registration process. Now you're fully registered and can take advantage of all of the things that are available to you in the scheduler on your student dashboard. Once you've completed your registration, then you're able to um, actually take the lab activity. And to do that, you'll need the link that's in your registration email for that activity. Or you can access the same link on the dashboard. Notice that this email contains not only the link for the lab in, in blue at the top, but also your username and password and lots of other important information that you'll need to pay attention to, especially if it's the first time that you've used this system. The student dashboard gives you access to all kinds of information that you might need, and you can get there anytime you want after you've finished your registration. For first-time users, you will need to install the receiver plugin and once you've done that, do not open it or do anything with it. It will be called whenever it's needed when you take your remote lab. There also uh, are some important other tutorials that you can watch that show you how to use the different kinds of equipment that you'll be using. Clicking on this link will take you to the lab if it's time for the lab. In this case, I'm too early, so I get a message telling me that I need to log in at this date and time. If it was time for my lab, it would take me to a login screen where I could enter my username and password that are shown here in this email, and that would give me access to the remote lab.